Destination Nightmare, the B Movie Podcast. <laughs> hey, ready to rock? Ready to rock? And maybe a roll too. Because this week's movie had a lot of TNA in it. it seemed yeah. like every five minutes you had to see something, which is fine with me. Not as much as I had thought, though, or expected. I thought it was more than I expected. I didn't expect to see, like, every scene was, like, every new woman in there. Okay, here you go. Oh, okay, thank you. Yeah, yeah and it's fun. I don't know if this really happens, but it seems like in these movies, whenever it's just women alone, they always get naked and just walk around like it's nothing. I know. It's great. It's just it's a fantasy, you know what I mean? <laughs> Crazy. I love fight here and there. I mean, for for what it, this movie this movie is a centerfold girls from 1974. For what it is, I, know, I thought it was pretty sleazy. I mean, you know, Andrew Prine and uh, it was the first girl was Jamie Lynn Bauer who was in soap operas, and then uh, you got the Aunt Tiffany Bowling who was in a bunch of uh, B movies actresses, and you see Aldo Ray in there and Mike Bazursky as the boat driver and uh, Francine York as a as a old the the the, the middle aged photographer woman and Ray Danton, it's got good people in this movie, yes. you know. Yeah, exactly. But pretty good. But uh, the man who I don't know who wrote the, all this. This uh, script was horrible. <laughs> <laughs> it delivers the goods, but yeah, it's very. Uh, there's no well, not that you needed any, but there's no there's no explanation of why. He's out doing things, except like, no, wait a minute, I'll take it back. At the end, it was some religious thing or something like that. Yeah, he was he kept going on again, off again about how it almost looked like he was getting turned on. Well, yeah. And killing them. And it's, it's like, OK, whatever. He, well, there was he, one. I was going to say, no idea from where he comes from or if he's done this before. No. Or, um, you know, and one one major. Plot hole. Well, he's this Andrew Prine is killing girls who are in the centerfold of uh, it's like a calendar, I guess, of the Bachelor magazine. So yeah. when he cuts out the head of one, like uh, Miss January, and you've turned the page, he's also cut out the head of Miss February. So I guess she got lucky. Yeah, that or we didn't get a chance to see that one. You know, they skipped a month just for the sake of. Making the movie only an hour and 20 minutes as opposed to, if they made it now, it'd be two and a half hours, you know, and very okay. gory, I'm sure, you know. Being yeah. veins, spurting blood. And... Yeah, there was enough. I mean, there was, there was murders. And there was a few bloodletting scenes, but it wasn't like gore or anything like yeah. that. It was. Uh... Uh, I mean, at the time in 74, that was considered really gory. But uh... Yeah, for, for a certain, for, to an extent, yeah. But yeah, not, compared to what you see now, it's like nothing. Yeah, I mean, there was a scene later on in the movie where he he wasn't in that in his. Uh, it's almost like you know what it looks like when he wears that suit and those shoes. It looks like he's a new wave guy, you know, with the yeah, thin yeah. tie and the. Yeah. <laughs> it looks like he should have been in a knack or something. I don't know. <laughs> I know. I mean. Thin, yeah. skinny tie, black suit, and then like those old, uh, those old black and white shoes. It was like, oh man, he's he was the uh, he was only like, he was seventy four. He was only like five years before New Wave came on, so he was a he was a trendsetter, the head of his time, ahead of his time. Yeah. Now, yeah, there was no really explanation. He just showed up out of nowhere. Well, the first scene is like he just pulling the girl <laughs> to the water or well, to the beach. And like, you know, oh, so there's your naked body and you see the centerfold girls and then he like digs a grave for her and, you know, boom, that's it. Yeah. You know, and you're like, okay, well, we started yeah. off with a bang here. Yeah, he didn't do any for that for any of the other uh, people. He just left them there to, where he killed them. So I, that was well, just. Well, there was a scene, though, at the end. But yeah, he no, well, that's right. When they were well, the scene in the island, he just left them there to die. But at the end. When that scene, when they came back, the cops came to the island. They saw all the bodies laying on the, uh, yeah, on, on the ground. by the pool. They were covered, but that wasn't him who did it. That was the police who did it, probably. And apparently, he collects their uh, 
one of the shoes. I think it's the right one or something. Oh, yeah, I missed that part. You collected one of the shoes? Oh, okay. Yeah. But just the centerfold girls, right? Not the... Uh... The other people, just the centerfold. Yeah. Then, yeah, because there was that one scene where he's looking and he's caressing this shoe, it's a sneaker or something, before he puts it in this, I don't know, desk somewhere with other girl shoes. So it looks like he's killed before, just not... Yeah. Well, the plot holes is, is how does he get their phone number and their address? What does he do, call the magazine and have them tell them? Or, yeah, I guess he looked them up in the phone book. I mean. Yeah, yeah could be, because apparently they, uh, uh, in this magazine, they gave their real names or or whatever. Yeah. Yeah, there's a lot I of holes. Really, a lot right, of holes. Right. You don't know what, why he's doing, well, other than he's a religious nut. But yeah, how does he get his their phone numbers? It's got to be the phone book, you know. I mean, I don't know. I guess he follows them. He's always got their numbers, though. I mean, yeah, he's always got them, you know, figured out. And then uh, that's weird. That's weird. The, the, you, you talk about getting turned on. There was one scene towards the end of the movie where you did see him, like from an angle where you couldn't see anything, sitting on the bed, and he was naked towards the end of the movie. So he wasn't wearing his. Uh, pinstripe suit or whatever it, there was a scene where he's sitting there at the it's towards the end and he's sitting there and you see him like he's got no shirt and his legs are hanging out over the bed but it's from a lower angle so you don't see anything but yeah he looks like he's naked or at least he's in underwear oh i don't remember that scene oh yeah yeah it's in there it's in there yeah so but i mean yeah andrew prime was always a good bad guy so he, he's perfect in the part of uh you know the killer and uh you know the girls are all pretty for the you know yeah. They're all pretty. Yeah, all pretty. I know a lot of the a lot of the stuff I read about says, "Oh, these buxom women." I'm like, they weren't they were, buxom, except for the first one he dragged out of the. Uh, yeah, no, you're right about that. Everyone else, they were kind of on the skinny side. They were, they were all pretty or whatever, and 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 oh, everybody and everybody like it's almost like everybody in the movie besides the centerfold girls was an asshole. Yeah, know? yeah, all the men were rapists. And all the women were bitchy. Were nasty, shrews or whatever. Cold, heartless. You know. The different 70s than I remember. Yeah, well, this is... <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, this is the dark side of the 70s or whatever, but, you know. But the did, did, they were wearing. It made them all hot and sweaty and itchy and, uh, under their clothes. <laughs> did they say... What, what the, the first one that was... That was killed. The one that at the beginning of the movie, she was a centerfold, I imagine, right? Or Miss January. Is she January, okay. Yeah. And then uh And then he no. would cut out their faces, right? Out of the uh, magazine after he killed them? Yes. Yeah. Uh yeah. He first he drew a red magic marker line around it. And then he he sent them yellow roses. That's right. And then he would call them and say, you're a bad girl and I want to help you and save you. And then he would follow them and kill them. Well, and he then, tried to. Yeah. And then he would go back and cut the face out with. The, he carried a, a straight razor with him. So like a like a shaving razor or something. So he, he would cut that out and then turn to the next page. And uh, whoever was on the backside of, of the month i guess he didn't care about so then he would do the same thing with the woman in the next month and then the next month and then the next yeah i mean i i don't know where they got the idea i mean there was like there was a serial killer guys back then but i don't know if there was ever a uh guy i'm sure people were stopping I mean, i'm sure plenty of people were stalking playmates yeah. back then yeah. but you know i don't think it ever got to like that point or whatever but uh yeah. I think we would have remembered that because that would have been a big. Yeah. Uh, when when did uh, Dorothy Stratton was this, was the? She so was eight. That was nineteen eighty. Yeah. Okay. So they didn't get it from there. But yeah, she definitely. She's the only centerfold I know who was murdered, and that was by her ex boyfriend. Boyfriend. Boyfriend or something. Because he got jealous because she was going to go with Hafner and. You know, 
I they made was... they made a few movies of that. I know there was one they made with uh, Jamie uh, Jamie Lee Curtis. Yeah. There was another one with uh, Mariel Hemingway, I think. Yeah. Wasn't she also dating some producer or director? Yeah, yeah. Peter Bogdanovich. That's yeah. right. Yeah. Bogdanovich. Yeah. He's so the that... guy that he's the guy that stole her away from uh, well, whoever the uh, the boyfriend or whatever. It was Peter Bogdanovich. Yeah. Oh, oh, oh also, well, Sharon Tate, she was killed by like a Manson-like family, but Roman Polanski. I don't think she, she wasn't a centerfold, was she? I don't think so. No, but she did a lot of move. She was doing movies, and she was getting kind of famous. Yeah, but I'm I'm not sure if she was. I'm not well, sure if they were really after her or not. No, or, but they were after uh, one of the Beach Boys, Dennis Wilson. Who uh, I think Charlie Manson wrote a song for him. Dennis Wilson, yeah. Wilson never paid him, so he went looking for Dennis Wilson, not knowing that Wilson had rented his house out to somebody else. <coughs> Sharon Tate was there, so they went in and like, well, we're here, might as well kill everybody. Oh, is that is that they were renting the? Uh, oh, they were, he was coming to get Dennis Wilson. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, and then, uh, but the back time Dennis Wilson had rented the house, it was somewhere else. And it's just ha- happened that Sharon Tate and some other people were over. I don't know if it was a small party or they were just hanging out. So the Manson came in looking for Wilson, and since he wasn't there, they just killed everybody. Oh, I didn't know the whole part of it. I thought they were, I thought they were just trying to get somebody famous. Because, you know, Wilson did use his song, but he didn't. He used the song. He changed the name of it. And I think he did pay. I think he did pay him, but I don't know if he paid him. But he did use a song, but he changed the lyrics. It may, either he didn't pay him, he paid him half or whatever, or he didn't give him credit for it or something. Something like that. Something just. Yeah, just, I'm not up on my Manson. Uh, <laughs> you know, I mean, it's like it's always been around forever, you know. But I'm not. I don't. Re- that I'm glad you said that because I really don't remember the reason why, except for the fact that they just wanted to. They were just running around wanting to kill somebody, but it was a revenge thing. Okay, all yeah. right. And and maybe that was part of the impetus for the story. But back then, California was weird. It was a lot of people, a lot of the you had good cults. Hippies. Yeah, and a lot of cultish weirdo hippies. Well, and, there was that. There was that part of this movie where there is kind of a cult. Remember? Yeah. So I'm thinking maybe that's what influenced some of this. You know. Well, back then, back you know what influenced this? I, I don't know if it's the exact, uh, the exact there, but the Zodiac Killer. Remember, there was a guy in California killing uh, couples, right, so, or something like that. In, in, they were out necking or whatever. He was a guy that killed people like on astrological dates or whatever. Oh, did he? Uh- the guy in, yeah, the guy uh, in Dirty Harry. I think he was based on the Zodiac Killer too. Okay. I don't know if it was astrological dates that he. I mean, I, I, again, I'm not a serial killer guy, so I don't, I don't know all the, uh, all the whatever. But it had something to do with the 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 astrology thing, you know, or whatever. And supposedly he never got caught, but maybe he did. I don't know. Again, I don't know my. No, I don't know my. Caught, but I think they recently discovered who he was, and I think his son sort of figured it out. By the way his dad acted and, and you know, what his dates match certain times the dad was away or something. I'm not yeah, well, that, was, that, was Cal- that was California back then, you know, not that it's like it's crazy now, but it had that was that was the uh, dark side of the hippie yeah, well, you know, I mean, thing. The drugged out people, most of them went to California, specifically uh, San Francisco and just crashed there. And, uh, you know, just started slowly ruining the city. Well, I, I've heard stories that in Laurel Canyon area, even after Manson and some of the girls were jailed, there were still others. And they yeah. were still going around and hanging out. At, and yeah. people would, like, get freaked out by them or whatever. Because they didn't, they didn't jail all of them because not all of them were in on the, uh, the murders. On the murders. Yeah. So they were still... And and that movie uh, that I watched, uh, that Tarantino movie, uh, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, that had a whole section about the Manson, you know, farm, ranch, or whatever, you know. But it was but Manson, 
Uh, was Manson in the movie? I don't remember. I know like Brad Pitt goes in there to to talk to the owner of the place, and he comes out and he kicks a couple of guys' butts. But mm-hmm. I'm not sure if Manson was in the movie or not. But all the girls were, you know, like Squeaky from and all those wow. all those weirdos. I think I think one of them got let out recently. One of the girls that actually was in the murder actually got let out of jail. Yeah. Oof. So yeah, this is kind of this is just you know. It's the same uh, feel of the yeah, because that's the like, that was like the dark side of the late sixties and the. But this is more like he was more like a religious fanatic, fanatic Which I than had a Manson, you yeah, know, guy. Those out there too, those religious fanatics who. You know, but Jesus. I don't know how many of them. I don't know how many of them were serial killers. But I would imagine, you know, I mean, he took it to like you know the extreme or whatever. But you know, at any rate, so basically, the movie starts off with like him dragging a naked woman or half naked woman across the beach, buries her in in the uh, in the sure. beach, and uh, you know, boom, you start you start yeah. into the movie. Yeah, it so goes I- to. It was this woman's, uh, was she taking a shower or something like that? Well, he goes back to the motel after that or the hotel or whatever, and he starts marking off the dead centerfolds. Right. And then the next one coming up is uh, Jamie Lynn Bauer. And she and she's just like some, I guess she did a centerfold, but she's just, she's like a nurse, and yeah. she's, it seemed like these people who did the centerfold weren't professional models. No. Just like did it on the side. So Jamie Lynn Bauer, she was uh She was a nurse. A nurse, right. So you and know, she was she, going to another town to look for another job or drives in to work. And then uh the receptionist says, Oh, you got some flowers. Says, oh, and then there's a phone call for her. And then it's the religion, Andrew Prine, and he said something like, you're dirty slut for, for exposing your body, and I want to help you, blah, 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 blah. So she hangs up on him, and then she, she's going out of town for a job interview. <clears throat> so then she gets to the new place, and they're like, oh, the director's out of town. I, I, I thought we, you know, we left you a message on your phone. Oh, I didn't get it. So then... And at that in that scene, you can see like the Aldo Ray, he's like a sleaze bag, and the wife kind of doesn't want her around because he knows he's a lech. So right, and then along which the comes way, into play later in the movie, but you know. stops for gas, and this this uh, young innocent looking girl goes, "Oh, I'm supposed to be picked up by friends, and you know they're three hours late, and I don't know what's going on." And you know the nurse goes, "Oh, I'll uh, take you there," you know, and she says, "My name," says so she gives her her name and all her details and stuff. In the meantime, you see like a bunch of uh, two lesbians and a hippie guy in a dirty poncho. They're watching her. And as, as the nurse and the girl drive away, they're all cheering. So she stops by, uh, it's like, I don't know, it's like a motel or something. Yeah. Yeah. She wants to speak to the guy. Oh, he's not here. He'll be back Monday. So she's well, my aunt, has a house just up the road, so I'm going to stay there. So she brings this stranger with her, and they go up, and the stranger's acting all innocent, naive, and stuff. So she goes to bed, and then you know, they both go to bed, and then the, the girl lets in her... They both go to bed topless, I believe. Yeah. <laughs> and of course. And they um, and, and also, while this is all happening, the Andrew Prine is following her in uh, an old car like an old rambler yeah which which looked like the first car my family had that i remember oh shit wow nice so um he's following them he's getting you know curious whatever so then she uh she and the girl they go to bed and in the middle of the night the um the young hitchhiker she opens the door. Her friends come to the door. She opens them up, and they're having a party, and they're making no noise. So she goes up, and she just puts a, a light robe on. She goes in, and she's like, you know, who who are these people? Oh, these are my friends. They went to see me where I, you know, thought where I was, but then they came here. And so she goes, oh, okay, just keep quiet. <laughs> so you got four strangers in your house. So then she goes back to bed. 
she doesn't lock her bedroom door and she gets in, you know half naked i guess she's just wearing panties which i'm like yeah i think if that were me i'd be piling stuff against the the furniture i'd be calling yeah the <clears throat> so they make more noise and so she wakes up and she yells at them and i'm gonna i'm gonna call the police and so he uh the guy smacks her and threatens her and then uh it looks like he's going to rape her, so he takes her to the bedroom, and then uh, somehow he decides not to. Oh, there's a knock at the door. And then Aldo Ray shows up. Aldo Ray shows up. Oh, I just, uh, you know, I just wanted to be neighborly. I thought you might, you know, uh, need anything because I'm going to the store. And, and uh, uh, you know, she's like, uh, uh, you know, the guy's told her if you say anything, well, I'll come back and burn the house down and stuff. So she says no to Aldo Ray, which is just stupid. I wouldn't have, so anyway, so they, uh, she leaves and she says, all right, but, you know, you're going to leave. I did what you said. You're going to leave in the morning. And they're like, no, we figured we stay a while. So they take her cash and they get her, they force her to drink. They and, paint you know, her face and stuff. And yeah, and they, they, she's all, she's drunk out of her mind. And they're, uh, uh, they're ransacking the place. <laughs> Back in her house, the one lesbian's trying to get it on with her and stuff. So she runs out of the house. She breaks up. She kicks the guy in, in the nuts. I think that's what. Yeah. 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 The house and she runs down to the. Uh, Aldo uh, Ray's office. Yeah. So she's all drunk. And. Uh, and he takes her to another motel room. Yeah. Puts her in there and Andrew Prine's in there. So he tries to get in and uh, uh, Aldo Ray comes back looking suspicious. And then Aldo Ray checks the door to see if it's open. So then the wife is like, oh, yeah, she's drunk and she's a slut. You got to get her out of here. So he goes, all right. So he takes her back to her house. And then he tries to rape her. And so she just lays there and does nothing. And he goes, well, well you know, you were all drunk last night and, and having a ball, apparently. Now you're just like cold and frigid or whatever. So he leaves. He doesn't rape her. Yeah. And then Andrew Prine comes and he knocks on the door and... Uh, I forget how he gets in, like what he says to get into her uh, house. But he's I think I, I'm not sure if the door was just open or not. You know, and he just walked in. I don't remember. Anyway, he uh, he starts. Uh, you know, I want to save you. He starts talking, and then she realizes it's the weirdo who's been sending her, who sent her flowers. So she, she goes and she runs out, and she runs out on the patio. He catches her, and then there's a. You see him raise his hand with the razor and slice downward, and then there's a blood splashed across the screen. Uh, the screen. Yeah. So, and then know, it can, and then it cuts back to him looking up some other. Girl, Miss well, May. Goes, well, first he goes back, cuts the yeah the, the picture out, and then he turns and then he starts doing the same thing with Miss is it Miss May or whatever the Ms. hell May, she May yeah, and um, so now he uh, what the hell Miss May is the student right 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 oh so, and she's. <laughs> you see her walking around, and and uh, she's going on a, a a photo shoot. Is it? Did they say that it was in Hawaii or something? It was a deserted deserted house on an oh, island or something. Old house, a deserted house, whatever. It was rental. Well, it, was, it was a mansion, but it was there was nobody there. It was isolated. Yeah. Isolated Mike, is the word. Mike uh, Mazursky. Yeah, the the tough guy. Yeah, he was a boat she's a skipper. Yeah. Whole bunch of usually plays gangsters or tough guys. Yeah, 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 yeah. He's the caretaker. So they rent it and they're going out and there's tension between um, the Ray lady. Danton and Francine York. Those are the two actors. So there's tension and they're always sniping at each other and there's three other girls. You know, because he's like, she's like, I think I'm not sure what their thing was, but they, they weren't. There was another guy who was a photographer. Right. But those two. He she called him a pimp, and I forgot he called her like a bitch or whatever. I guess they were the pro, they were the ones who said set, set up the photo shoot or whatever. I don't know, but weird like that. Yeah, because I thought he was a photographer, but he wasn't. It was a young guy. The young guy was a photographer, right? Yeah, and so there was a, and there was there was a, there was Miss May. There was a blonde, and there was a redhead. Right. So he's. Um... 
And then you see Andrew Prine. He was following them. He saw them get away in the boat. And he doesn't he steal? He steal well, what happens is Mazursky leaves. Right. And then and then when he goes back on on land, that's when uh, Andrew Prine steals the boat and goes out there. So, um, so uh, Andrew Prine gets out there, and of course the doors. And nobody seems to lock their doors. No. So he's out there. And then uh, he's, you can hear him going around the house. And then uh, and, and there's no power in that house, too, for yes, whatever reason. No power, no phone. Uh, so. You think they uh, would have, like, fixed that before they got there or whatever, but okay. The blonde girl, she goes in and has sex with, uh, what's his Ray name? Ray Danton. Ray Danton. Because he is a pimp, and he says, he says if, if you do me a favor, I'll introduce you to Rich. It's powerful. Guys, because she actually there and she wants to be introduced to, you know, to, right. to to get famous or whatever. So he says, so he is a pimp in a way, you know. So he says, Yeah, I'll introduce you to rich and powerful man if you, you know, do me a favor. But then you gotta give me twenty percent of what you make. <laughs> so that's yeah. the pimp. Yeah. So So then uh, Andrew Prine sneaks in the house. And he goes to the first, uh, one bedroom, and it turns out to be uh, York. What, what's her name? Francesca? Francine York. Francine York. And then he sees it's <laughs> it's the wrong girl. So he pulls the covers back, and he tucks so he her. leaves her alone. And then he goes. Yeah, because she was sleeping. That's right. Yeah. He hears the blonde girl coming out of Danton's room, going back to her. So he sort of sneakily runs downstairs quick. And the blonde girl sees him. She thinks it's one of the, the photographer, so she goes. She's calling, and then she opens the door. She goes out. Now she's, of course, in all she has on is a silky robe that barely reaches. A nightgown, yeah, robe. Yeah. Whatever. So she's out there, and and she's barefoot too. And she's looking around, and she's, she doesn't see anyone. So then she goes off to the corner, the edge, of the. Uh, a cliff there and she's looking down and then Andrew Prine comes up behind her and you, they don't show it but I don't know if he cuts her slices her throat or just pushes her off so but she's dead right. and then the next day and they're you know doing the nude, nude shots and uh, they're like you know they're and, like, and, and, Ray Dan and Ray Danton tries to pimp the redhead but she turns him down I believe kind of knows him or knows what he is and then yeah. uh, uh they're like well where's uh the blonde you know we haven't oh i think she's still asleep or she was or she was hungry or went for a walk or whatever so they're all like looking around and uh, then the redhead goes off to the the same cliff and she's looking around too and then she sees uh the dead blonde she screams everybody's there oh my god so they don't even move the body. They just leave her lying there. And then uh, Francine York says, well, come on. We got to finish the shoot. Come on. Yeah, right, right. She's a total, uh, yeah. So she just died. So then, uh, you know, they all go back to bed again. And uh, that night, uh, uh, the brunette. Brian, gets, it. Brian brunette. gets in again. Yeah, he gets in again. The centerfold, she goes downstairs because she's hungry. So then as he's going to look for the other bedrooms, Danton comes out and sees him and goes, who are you? And he gets stabbed and falls down the stairs. And then everybody's screaming. And, uh, uh, and then they, they suspect that they suspect Francine York because they. Yeah, because Danton and Francine always were always arguing, you know, I mean, viciously arguing. So then um, they're like, well, maybe there's somebody else on the island. Although, yeah, first they're suspecting Francine. So they're all weird and creeped out. And then the. Uh, then the photographer says, I'm going to go out. I got a gun. I'm going to go out and see who's out there. I'm going to, you know, I got a 38 or whatever. You girls lock yourself up in your rooms. Right. Which they do. And then, of course, uh, for, for one reason or another, they, they hear a scream. Oh, yeah, they hear a scream. The student decides that they go and investigate. And then they find Francine York dead in the shower. In the shower. And then the uh, the two girls are sitting on the stairs, terrified. And then the 
the uh, and then the, the photographer gives them a gun, right? He gives yeah, them a gun at this point. Go back outside again. It's like, well, wait a minute. How do you know he's not in the house? <laughs> That's what I'm thinking, because you just found a second dead body. Maybe he's upstairs in one of the bedrooms, and you guys don't know him. So anyway, he gives the gun to the. Room and he out. says he's going to go look for a go a boat or something. Right. So he goes out. And, um, you know, he's looking around. Of course, Danton is hot. Uh, uh, Andrew Prine is hiding. And he slices the guy's neck and kills him. That, that's, does he fall? I think he falls into the pool or something. I don't know. So then the, the two girls are terrified sitting on the stair. And then the redhead goes, I'm cold. And the brunette goes, I'll go get a blanket rather than come with me. Yeah, right, right, right. He's on the stairs. And so the the brunette's in the the how in her bedroom looking for a blanket. Candle goes out, so she decides to light it. I don't know why. <laughs> so she's lying. Then she and then the redhead it gets it's getting freakier. So she walks upstairs and goes to the bedroom, and the brunette hears her. And she thinks it's the the killer. So when the redhead opens the door, the brunette shoots her. <laughs> and uh, how does the uh, oh she she doesn't she go out running screaming? Yeah, she goes out running and screaming, and 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 Prime gets her. Yeah, and she still got the gun. So I don't know. Yeah. You know. So okay. But she was she was scared she was scared of like the gun, but she was able to shoot her friend with it, you know. But yeah, she she ran out and she and he gra and he caught her and he and he uh and he, and he killed her. And then in the next scene, you see the cop. Uh, and, and there's uh, all the dead bodies; they're all covered with sheets. And then the cops talking to Mike Mazursky, and he goes, uh, "How do you know? How do these people die?" And well, and Mazursky says, uh, "Well, maybe uh, one of them killed everybody else and then committed suicide." And the cop goes, eh, I don't know, it doesn't sound like it. And he said, well, I mean, how did they get it? How did the killer get out here? You know, did he come by your boat? And he goes, no, my boat was all locked up and it was exactly the same when I uh, came back out. So, you know, all right. so then you see Mr. So then basically what, basically Andrew Prine got back in the boat, took off, okay. parked it at the same spot and left it. Yeah. Okay. Because they don't really explain it too well. Yeah. So then... Uh, you see Prime back. He cuts out the the um, fate you. of Miss May, and uh, then he's like fondling her shoe, and he puts it away. But then you see uh, two stewardesses come out. They're talking, and uh, they go to uh, I guess they live at a hotel or something. And uh, you know the one wants to go skinny dipping, and the other ones she's oh I'm tired. I want to go to 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 bed and she um she sees uh she goes in and she sees flowers on her table she goes she goes out to a friend who uh, who gave me the um flowers and he says oh i guess it's your ex-boyfriend who you're mad at and she goes oh i don't know so then the stewardess she's who's a centerfold tiffany she, bowling is the actress's name who did a lot of b movies back then she she goes back in, and uh, Andrew Prine calls her and says, "I want to save you for exposing your your dirty body, filthy soul, whatever." So then she goes, "Ugh." So uh, you know, she hangs up the phone, and then they are. Uh, uh, I don't know if they're at a party or. What. Yeah, there's like a drunken party that they're that they're at. Yeah, Everybody's laughing and looking at it. It's, it you know what it looks, it looks like. When they show parties on commercials, everybody's smiling to each other and everybody's talking at the same time. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly it. Yeah. So the her friend, uh, she goes, she spills something on her blouse. So she goes in, or I guess it's her roommate. She goes in to clean her holster top off. So of course she's half naked. She takes and, her top off. Yeah, of course. Uh, and her friend had snuck into the room. So uh, he kills her, and then he. He realizes he made a mistake. So then the same cop who's on the island, he's back and he's asking the, the cheerleader, the nurse questions, the blonde, she's a blonde too. And she doesn't know. And uh, she, oh yeah, that's the scene with him naked. 
So uh, he, um, eventually, the cops figure out they're killing centerfolds. Yes. Yeah. So then she's lying in bed. And she keeps getting phone calls for, from Prime. From Prime. Yeah. Prime, and she gets spooked. So she calls the uh, police officer, who of course isn't there. So she decides to hightail it out. To uh, he had talked to her before, but she she called him when the in the middle of when he was getting calls, and like you said, he wasn't there. So she decided to leave town. Yeah, because she so, had gotten another call from Prime, and she was going to tell the cop, "Hey, I got another call," and they said, "Oh, he's not. He's off today." I'm like, yeah. "Well." I'm, I'm somebody's trying to murder me. Can you get him a message at home, please? You know, oh, I have another homicide cop. <laughs> yeah, I have another homicide cop, please. You know, tells her friend, I'm go, I'm leaving. I'm not telling anybody. And the friend goes, Well, what if somebody needs to contact you? And she goes, Well, okay, I'm, t- I'm going up to this motel, the Shady Rest Motel there. And so then she drives up, and then Prime calls, and her friend picks up. I said, you know, I want to speak to the dirty nurse centerfold. And the friend goes, well, <laughs> I don't know where she is. She's gone. And he goes, well, I'm her mother's doctor. And the stewardess. The stewardess. Yeah. So Tiffany's a, Tiffany's a stewardess. Not a nurse. Yeah. Nurse was the, the second one. Stewardess. The first so she, one. Stewardess. So the friend goes, well, I want to, I'm her doctor, I'm her mother's doctor, and she's in a bad way, and I need to speak to her. And, of course, the woman goes, um, well, I guess that's different. She's here at this motel. So I'm like, oh, boy. It, it's not like she could say, wait a minute, let me call her back and tell her. Yeah. And, uh, and uh, you know, that we'll be fine. She doesn't yeah. want anybody to call her. So she's, uh, she tries to call the stewardess. The stewardess, of course, is in the shower. And then the stewardess tries to call her, her friend who gave her away her, her, her hideaway. And she's outside, opposing by the pool, and then jumps in. So then yeah. Andrew Prine drives up to where she is, and uh, he, she's uh, the stewardess is walking on the beach, you know, just I guess looking at the thing and uh, the scenery. And Andrew Prine, you see him sitting there, you know, watching her. So then, um, did he send her flowers well, again or something? Either that or he calls her. I don't know. I don't remember which. But so she like screams at him and yells. And she gets in her car and starts driving off. And he sees her leaving because he's in the hallway as she's running out or whatever. He follows her. And then her car gets a flat tire or something. So then she's hitchhiking. Oh, she's by the car. She's picked up by two Navy guys. (laughs) <laughs> so she's like, and she's sitting between them. So they drive her to, uh, and, and Andrew Prine follows them. So and he then, then both of them are, both of them are getting drunk, and she's like, "Are you sure right. you should be driving? Right, just drunk." So then they drug her, and their their uh, their plans are to have sex with her. So they drug her beer, or oh, it's actually a malt liquor with the wide, forty-five, the wide mouth. So she's all drugged and stuff. So they stop at a motel. And they rape her, and then they leave her there. And then Andrew Prine had called the sh- local sheriffs and what he heard. And she's all upset, you know. And uh, so he's like, well, you know, do you need a lift home? And she's like, yeah, how many rides does she want to take, you know? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. He goes, well, I'm, you know, I, I don't know. I sell Bibles or so, something like that. And he says, I'm just going home to my wife. Yeah, yeah. yeah. She's gonna get in. An, she's gonna get in another car with another stranger. Yeah. Good, good job, Tiff. So he, he uh, is driving. You know, and they're talking, and then you know she's not suspicious or anything. So then they stop at a at a gas a, station. Yeah, small little town. has got a gas station and a, I guess a small general store, or whatever tourist shop and he gets like he looks like he's getting like a, a tape a electrical tape and a knife that and the knife and i guess the killer or something so she but he already had his blade it's it's almost like they did this for whatever what happens at the yeah. end but at any rate so, yeah. so she uh um goes in getting in and and uh 
to the garage and gets her uh, and sets up to get her car towed. So she goes back to the car. She looks and she sees Bachelor magazine. So she like opens it up and she sees the centerfold section that she's in and she starts opening and she sees all the faces cut out and she gets all suspicious. And then uh, Andrew Pryor gets in and he takes out the knife out of the hands. Look what I bought. Isn't this cool? So then he sticks it in, you know, sticks it back in the. Yeah. And then he sees her that she had looked at the. Uh, the nudie mag. Nudie mag. And so he takes the knife out and holds it to her throat. As he's driving, and then he pulls off on some deserted road that goes uh, to to some like I don't know, looks, looks like the uh, surface of the moon. It's all dry, and stuff. there's all these dead, burnt trees. So uh, he, he get they get out of the car, and he's like, "I want to help you because of her, you know whatever you know he's spiel." So then she kicks him in the nuts. He drops the knife. So she, no, first he's ch- chasing her. He's chasing her, yeah. yeah. He drops the knife when she 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 gets, she, she grabs a, a rock and blinds him because he's got glasses right. on. Right. So she's trying to like, uh, uh, what what you know, make him not do it, and then she like, so she says, you know, do you want to get, do you want to? She's trying to escape from him, but like when he comes at her, he she she hits him with a rock, right. and he's like, oh, I can't see, and then she's like, okay, so she grabs the knife. Right. So then he he goes to attack her and then she like stands up and she's like, come on, buddy, you want it? You know, come on. So then uh, she ends up stabbing him. A few uh, times, a couple of times, yeah, because she's she's suddenly angry now. So, yeah, she stabs him a couple of times and then he sort of leans back against the tree and he as as he's dying, he says, I only wanted to help you. And then uh, the scene is uh, uh, it cuts away to her standing there holding a knife sort of looking up into the sky and he's lying there dead. And then, you know, that sort of slowly pulls out with some uh, weird, weird music. And it's like, and the oh. credits and the credits yeah. for each of uh, each of the uh, scenes or whatever. Right. So, uh, yeah, it's, a, it's the movie deliver. It's a, it's a seventies sexploitation thriller, horror, right. whatever. It, it, I mean, for the time it delivers the goods. I mean, but yeah. But like you said, it's got plot holes in it like crazy, you know? Yeah, it seemed like all the women in it were stupid. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty much, like, yeah. They just they just want they just either would pick up a stranger or get into anybody's car. Yeah, or or uh, and uh, you know, and no nobody wears any underwear under their clothes, apparently. <laughs> and and you know, the thing about it is I guess if you're in a situation where you're getting somebody not go well, now with phones it's different but back then it's like you're probably not thinking straight if you've got some murderer chasing you or whatever you know what right. i mean but i would i would much smarter call the cops or call the cop station instead of getting in the car with two sailors on leave yeah, yeah exactly. it just seemed like a weird you know she's uh well back then though a lot of people hitchhiked sure they did they sure did yeah they I sure just, did I remember a couple of people. I met him in college. I had hitchhiked across the country. I'm like, isn't that dangerous? Well, I got beat up and robbed a couple of times, but eh. like, really? <laughs> okay. Yeah. Well, you're lucky you just got beat up and robbed, as opposed to like you know killed or whatever. Yeah, I had a friend. My friend used to hitchhike to school and stuff. I was like, I never did it. You know, I remember yeah. seeing hitchhikers. You know, but. Never, none of them were hot chicks except once. One time, yeah. there was a couple of hot, and they were in bikinis too. And the dummy that I was driving with didn't want to pick them up. And I'm like, "Are you kidding me?" So we didn't. Well, but at well, any rate, carry a concealed weapon <laughs> in bikinis. Yeah, well, these girls weren't carrying concealed weapons. They had like bikinis on. They were just, they were just '70s yeah. fun t- types or whatever. But you know, it is what it is. But yeah. Yeah, no, you're right. It was a different time when people were doing stupid things like that, yeah. and and not not thinking and or thinking they could um, uh, change the society and the culture by just being nice and friendly, you know. Which we still have now. We still have we have unfortunately the lawmakers now who think, oh, if you're nice to the criminals, they'll stop being criminals. Like, I don't know. yeah. 
Yeah, that's, uh, you know, that is what it is. But at any rate, the movie served up the, uh, if you want to see like topless women, there's plenty of them in this movie. It seems like, it seems like all the main actresses just took the tops off. So, okay. You know, that's cool. The murder, the, the murders were, you know, the one where he cuts her and it hits the, the, the window, the mirror, that was a little, but the rest of them are pretty like innocuous. You know, it's not gory. Same. Even the one where if the blood hits the window, you don't see it. You see him like raise and lower his head. Yeah. He's kind of off camera. Then you see the blood uh, splatter the window. But again, so it's 74. It was like shocking. And then it was. It was. It's a typical drive-in movie for the times. Yeah. Um, it, well, <laughs> what I was going to say, it, uh, in spite of all the plot holes, it made a lot more sense than uh, Candy. Oh, my God. Or yeah. The Magic Christian. <laughs> we, uh, rewatched Candy, the longer version. You did rewatch it. Okay. And uh, except, except for that scene with John Houston, where he comes in and he he blames Candy for being um, immoral. And, Is that and the cold. James Coburn scene or whatever the the hospital? Yeah, and uh, what the uh, John Houston? Yeah, that was a long scene that um, was uh, cut out. And then there was another scene where you see uh, John Aston, the, the the hippie guy, the hippie one. His wife was getting tattooed. By um, uh, James Colburn, and they're like, "Oh, you're next." And then she, then you, she runs out. That that scene was cut. So it's like they cut a little, it, like some of the sex scenes were a little longer. Yeah, but but I mean, at the end, at the end, the scene where the temple is like you know being you know demolished, and she's in there with the with the guy with the toucan yeah. and the mud on his face, and the in the cut version. You don't know that's her that in the cut version, you know it's her dad, but they cut out the scene where he's having sex with her. Right. And then uh, as as uh, she's having sex with him. It was it was a not it was an innocuous scene, but you can see that they were both and then the blood then the water hits his face and you can see that's her dad. And she goes, Daddy, which was in both of them, and that was kind of like the the right. a pivotal scene in the movie that the meaning of it was cut out. For the short version, right? Maybe they thought it was offensive that it was incest. I don't know. But uh, yeah, it's just like um, it wasn't anything big deal that they no, cut out, except for the except for the ending. It wasn't a big deal what they cut out. What did they cut out of the ending? Because it looked the same to me. No, no, I told you at the very end of the movie when she's walking, when she's I'm talking about the scene where the temple crumbles. Oh, that's. Yeah, and you that, find out that, she, that before that, she finds out he's he's her dad, but right before she, he was he was he was having sex with her, right? And then the water hits his face, and you see the the, the mud, yeah, yeah, the cake mud, and she goes, "Daddy," and he's like, right. "Oh." So in the cut version, she just goes, "Daddy," yeah, but so in the she, uncut version, they were ma- they were making it before she finds out. And almost in the in the cut version, you can maybe she's just like screaming it out, like. She just screams it out because she sees his face. But the, the before that happened, he was they were having incest or yeah. whatever. I don't know. Yeah, they, yeah, yeah. I mean, I, mean uh, I thought you meant the very ending where, uh, you know, she's walking around. And- no, no. When she's walking there and seeing everybody, like, going through her life or whatever. Yeah, no, no, no. I'm talking about the scene in the temple, the scene in the temple when they, when they, yeah. uh, they're it's walking not- towards. It, it's, it is towards the end of the movie. I mean, you know. The scene it where, is kind of towards the end because it's right before the scene where she just basically just walks through all the people in, in the movie in their own little. I think that's also how the book ends. It okay. Ends uh, there's the scene with the hunchback where he takes her into the d- abandoned man- mansion. You see him climb up walls before he starts having sex with her. They don't explain it, but then when, and then when he's having sex with her, um, it's a longer scene, but again, you just see him popping up and down. But he, he doesn't explain why he can walk up and down the walls or anything. Pistol and and nothing about the 
drag queen thing was was uh, cut, and uh, it's just it, it okay. was still a disjointed mess. With with I, I so, guess so the, the the John the John Houston scene probably took up like ten minutes. Yeah. I would imagine. So they probably you know a minute here, a minute there. The scene with that's, Ringo, that's what it seems. Yeah, the scene with Ringo having sex with her was like I don't know, maybe a minute longer. And, yeah. Uh, you know, it, it, when this movie started out, it seemed interesting because you know, it starts out with uh, you know pictures of galaxies and space and the moon and Earth and stuff, and this and then there's light sort of like you know sparkling light coming down, and it lands down on this beach. And then it slowly dissolves into her. I mean, and that sounds kind of interesting. And so you, you it, know, it, <clears throat> it would have been if they kind of kept it like that and got out some of the stupid sex farce crap. It, it may have been a more, it may have been a more interesting movie, you know. So I just think they just added the sex because hey, we can do sex now, isn't that cool? Uh, kind of. Well, I mean, was it was the sex in the book? I don't know. Uh probably. I think so. And, I don't know, never read it. About it, and they just wrote it as a lock. They was like, "Let's write something stupid," and, and then when they put it out, everybody was applauding it and and lauding it as you know the great new literature and and storytelling and whatnot. And uh, he he, uh, what's his name? The guy who wrote. Oh, what the fuck is his name? Terry Southern. The, yeah, Terry Southern, and he. Terry wrote Southern it. or uh, Buck Fa- Buck Henry wrote the script. Right, but the book, the guy, Terry Southern wrote the book. With no, the, the book, the original book, Candide was Voltaire. Then Terry Southern did a version of it called Candy. And that Buck, Buck, that's not true. Somebody, some critic said that. Oh. And, and Terry Southern and uh, some other guy, he, they're like, what? I. So, so, so the, the movie, the book Candy isn't like a, isn't like an updating of Candide. No, not at all. Oh, okay. And it's just it's just okay. like somebody, somebody made a connection and then that became the part of the mythology of this. Oh, interesting. Okay. Because the guys who wrote it, like I said, they wrote it for a lark and they're like, you know, they were surprised at how popular it suddenly became and how important everybody saw them. And they're like, all right, whatever. You know, but oh, actually, so it, was, it was written in 59. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah, so it, it, the longer version didn't really add anything to whatever story, little story was there, except for that one scene at the end, which which was a yeah, which made it yeah. which how I don't know how important it was, but it was a revelation at least. Uh, you know, yeah. I mean, it, it was resi- it was revealed that the guy was a father, but before that, of course, they cut out the scene with the implied sex because they, I guess they thought it was just too much or something. I don't know. I don't. I don't know what the deal was. Why? I mean, I could. I could see why they would cut it to one forty, maybe for television. Maybe, but uh, European television. I don't know. They probably could have. I don't know. Uh, there was another scene that was missing. Was uh, in the cocktail party, uh, where it's a more a pro, It's a longer scene of John Aston, the cool John Aston, trying to have sex with Candy. And as they're rolling around, the uh, dad, John Aston, fell on the floor. So he, he's running around. So then the, the evil nurse, she uh, she pulls candy off. And then she, she starts uh, um, yelling at the, the cool John Aston, thinking it's the dad John Aston. <laughs> I don't so know. He starts trying to have sex with her, and you see some boob and stuff. And then uh, John Aston comes in and he starts yelling at Candy, and she faints. And and uh, uh, Colburn picks her up and carries her into the the um, uh, an empty hospital room to examine her and have sex with her. And then it's a scene you see John Aston sort of walking away. Mm. So, yeah, I mean, it kind of, wasn't that important. No, it, 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 may, it may have filled up a little bit of hole here and there, but the movie is so disjointed and 
and bizarre and, and incoherent, it, it didn't really do anything except make a longer movie. Well, I'll tell you what, I, it's not a good copy. And I, I believe it's still on YouTube. And if not, I can probably find a copy of it. But yeah. You tell me. Okay, there's a movie called The Girl from Starship Venus. It's a real similar story, except this one, The Girl from Starship Venus, is more is it's it's more explicit than uh oh. than candy. Yeah. It's on YouTube. I'll 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 find it for you. But it's okay. but it really in reality, it's almost like the same story. Because in the beginning, Candy, you don't know if she's coming from outer space or from another right. dimension or anything like that. Right. It would have been this one you can th- this other one, the girl from Starship Venus, you can she's definitely coming from outer space. It, it probably it's, a, it's a different take on it. I mean, I'm not sure. I, I, I just made the connection when I watched Candy, but the the other one, the girl from Starship Venus, there's only crappy copies out there. The apparently Tarantino's got a really nice print of it, but they're not releasing it on on home video. So, uh, you know, but yeah, that's another one. It probably would have been a somewhat better movie if Candy was an alien rather than just a naive. Well, it's weird because at the beginning of it, it looks like she's coming from the stars, right. and then at the end, it looks like she's going back to right. where she came right. from. And that whole see when I first saw that, that's what I was. I thought maybe Candy was this sort of innocence alien. She was. She kind of was. Yeah, but they, they, it was poorly executed. You know. Yeah. Just, well. And they, and they too heavy handed with. Um, Trying to make fun of the military and authority. Yeah, that whole scene with Walter Matthau was silly. It was. Yeah, I mean, he, he was good. He was a good actor, but his scene was just wasted, overly long, and stupid. And I guess, I guess, if you're anti-military, you would have found it, you know, enormously funny. But it wasn't. Maybe it was funny in 1968 or something. I don't know. Maybe. Maybe it's it's fifty fifty something years ago, so I don't know. I, I mean, I, I I believe the movie got good reviews back then, which is amazing to me. Critics back then were hyper liberals, and uh, I think some the the ones who panned this there were some people who panned and said this is a horrible mess. But I know like Roger Ebert gave you know three stars out of four or whatever. I was like, mm. but he you know I never liked the movies he always liked. Well, Roger <laughs> Ebert who wrote uh. Who wrote uh, yeah. Beyond the Valley of the Dolls or whatever? Horrible movie. Oh. Kind of a funny movie, but yeah, it was pretty. Oh, it was terrible. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was expecting, well, he's a movie critic. He must know movies. So I was expecting something good because I had seen Valley of the Dolls too. So I'm like, and which was kind of interesting. So I'm like, okay, that's, uh, that's it. This was some horrible mess too. Okay, that was the Centerfold Girls. And we did a little bit more of Candy. Right. To try to see if it made any sense, and Actually. it didn't. The long version did not make any more sense. No. So that's yeah. the way it goes. And yeah. next time we'll next time we'll do the girl from Starship Venus, which uh, is pretty sleazy too. So okay, well that's all right. <laughs> it's probably sleazier. It's probably sleazier than this movie. Oh, so. oh yeah. If it makes a little more coherence than this one. I'll it, 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 yeah, it, it's yeah, it's it's more linear, I believe. Yeah. So, yes, I know. Sometimes linear uh, storytelling works. Well, I mean, I mean, the the, the 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 Stanford Girls was linear, but it was just it right. had plot holes and things yeah. that didn't the way people behaved didn't make any sense. Yeah. But like I said, if you're in a stressful, if you're in a situation where somebody's trying to murder you, or you're in a, you may not think logically, which was me trying to give them a break. But yeah, in reality, no, it's it's not the way it should be. Yeah. So anyway, we'll be back in a couple of weeks, and uh, please subscribe to our show and give us a like and do all that fun stuff. And I'm also posting uh, movies. I posted another Miami movie, not a Miami movie, but a movie taped off Miami TV called Night of the Witches, which is a pretty rare movie, actually. I just posted it the other day. It's it's it never was out on, not that I know of, on VHS or DVD or anything. And uh, it's a cut version, but the, supposedly the uncut version, the only print that's still around is the one that the 
director, the actor, uh, Keith Larson, gave to the UCLA Film School. Okay. So it's from Miami TV, so you get all the goofy commercials. And, cool. you know, I put those and, and I put those in, in our shows to get a balance of, uh, you know, the yeah. movies and the talk. So yeah. there you go. A sense of time and place when we watch them. Yeah, I mean, and they're movies that we haven't pretty much watched, but at least it's, I, I like the idea of the old Saturday night, Friday night creature feature show, you know, with the intro and a couple of commercials here and there to give you the vibe and then right. some TV print. I mean, the ones the ones from Miami TV have a lot of, a lot more commercials than I put in the ones that aren't from Miami TV. They have, I forgot about how many late night commercials there were. And a lot of them are like, the party line and a and a lawyer and public service stuff. So yeah, <laughs> be prepared. You know, yeah, but uh, they they insert a, a two hours of commercials between. <laughs> yeah, I would. I always I always thought that if a movie was at one or two in the morning, they wouldn't do that, but they were doing it. But maybe at three or four in the morning, they just they just toned it down a little bit, but. Man, it was like I was watching one of them the other day, and it was like in between the breaks, it was like, like f almost four minutes of commercials. I'm like, really? Wow. Wow. The uh, what was it? The Dion Warwick psychics, you know? <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, the psychic line. Yeah. Oh, how did you know that about me? I'm a psychic. Oh yeah, <laughs> that's right. Uh, oh, speaking of psychics, before I forget about this, I had no idea about this. There is a that somebody was telling my friend was telling me there is a town in Florida called Casadega, and that town is awful of psychics. Oh, I've heard of that. I'd I never heard about it. Uh, uh, I remember seeing it on something. Was it uh, <laughs> Elba, one of those kind of TV shows? Really. Uh, Early on, but I I've heard of it and it's always in the back of my mind. I'm like, wonder what it's like because I remember they brought a film crew in and you see all these psychics sort of peeking out behind windows and watching the the camera crew go by. And I think they talked to one psychic. But yeah, that's kind I mean, it's a weird place. Yeah, it's it's about an hour away from here, so it's wow. like I don't know, but yeah, I just I just heard about it the other day and I was like, really. Wow. Anyway, whatever. I'm just saying that just popped into my head. It was something I had to, uh, I had to say. So anyway, uh, Santa Fe Girls, it is what it is. If you like TNA and murders and Andrew Prine and pretty girls, hey, there's your movie. But if you're looking for, you know, a movie that makes kind of sense, eh, not so much. <laughs> it's a good drive-in movie. It is, but, but it needs another movie afterwards. Like it needs a... Uh, I don't know something else, so some other movie with Tiffany Bowling, like Bonnie's Girls, or I don't know. Anyway, I'll be back in a couple of weeks with uh, the girl from Starship Venus. But in the meantime, Roddy, what should we be doing in between movie your shows? We should watch more B movies. Yeah, don't watch good movies. Just watch no. B movies. Yeah, exactly. We got to keep the. We got to keep. Yeah, yeah we got to keep it going. You know. <laughs> not that there's that many, not that there's that many good movies around anymore, but and they're usually too long and boring anyway. So between a B movie and a bad movie, <laughs> there is a difference. Yes, but they're usually, but they're usually both kind of bad, but good, you know. But B movies are bad in a good way. In a good way. 